I would like to, at just some point, before we get to the next, next level of this, which is we all get to go to the moon and see what's really there with our own eyes, I'd just like to start one of these on time. Just one, <laughs> you know? I mean, is that too much to ask in, 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 a, in a universe of infinite majesty and splendor, et cetera? Just one time, all the technical stuff is set up, and I come up and I sit down and it's ready. Oh, I shouldn't moan and complain, I guess. After all, I am, <clears throat> and Mike is a New York Times bestseller this morning. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> Isn't, Isn't that absolutely stunning when you consider that it's all due to you guys? I mean, the only people that I have had a chance to regularly talk to in the last three weeks since Dark Mission was released is you guys on coast. And with the help of George, who has been of inestimable value, and Premier, and uh, the network that they're all you know, part of, Clear Channel, we have been able to reach so many people that as of this morning, as of November 4th, 2007, if you go to the New York Times website and click on the bestseller list, you will find us number 25. However, if you go there a week from now on, yeah, we need to kill, if you go there a week from on November 11th, 11-11, you'll find us at number 22, which is two times 11. This is getting freaky. This is definitely getting freaky. This is, this is Rod Serling time. This is definitely, um, well, this is, remember how Art used to say, want to take a ride? <laughs> we are going to be taking, all of us, a very interesting ride. And I'm going to begin this morning by putting some context behind what we have done to bring us here before I bring on Mike Barra, my esteemed colleague and friend and someone who is really, you know, of all the people that I've met over the years that I have worked with, um, I think I've known Mike the longest and we've done more things. There are other people that I've done a lot with, like, you know, David Wilcock is, is actually wonderful to work with and Jay, you know, who is our producer and director of the um, documentary that we're basically filming all over the country and other parts of the world and here today. Um, I've known him a very long time, but we haven't really worked together. We've known each other, we've shared a lot of interesting information, but we this haven't like worked together and this is an interesting experience States. working together. Out Getting Jay out of bed at 6 a.m. to go at dawn to watch sunrise in the Lincoln Memorial and which of you see that whole sequence. Osiris. I mean, Osiris. we really got Is some amazingly important stuff. We were able to communicate some States. things about Washington and Lincoln and the memorial that have never been put on film by anyone, I guarantee you, in the modern history of the human species. So you'll be able to see that in the, in the finished product. But of all the people that I worked with uh, consistently, Mike has been the most interesting person and the, actually the easiest to work with because Mike can write. Right? Mike can write in the shower, he can write before breakfast, he writes before coffee, he writes when I call him up at 3 o'clock in the morning, he just writes. And most of it, the first time, comes out the correct way. I have to really, I mean I edit, I edit, I edit, but he is a facile writer and it's mostly right, it's mostly accurate. He has an incredible memory to be able to retain, which is why I do fly in airplanes that he has designed. You know. Um, but he won't. The thing that really bothers me is that Mike drives everywhere. He will not fly. And that, I'm, 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 I've been trying to ask him for years, what is that really all about? And he avoids that direct question. It's like he knows something about the 737 that I should know and don't know at the moment. Anyway, um, with all that as prelude, yes, we are on the New York Times bestseller list after only three weeks. And it can only go up from there, and I cannot imagine what's going to happen in, in the next, you know, three weeks. So, we uh, were in Washington. Oh, no. That's bizarre. Oh, I see what that's doing. Okay. And we had a party. We basically threw this little party. Yes, you're, you're, you're. Okay. No, we don't want it beeping. Okay. Thank you. Yes. He designs airplanes. Okay. 
we threw this party and we had a lot of people come. We had a 40 seat room, we had overflowing, um, we had television cameras arrayed all across the back, both from the folks that we knew were coming domestically as well as a lot of people that I didn't know. And it's only afterwards that I um, discovered that the, the folks that were actually the most interested in what we were doing vis-a-vis -vis this particular book, this is the cover of the bestseller, which we'll be getting you know, per the event today. Uh, the people that showed up to hear us talk about and present our information and discuss with Ken Johnston, who is the Apollo Photo and Data Manager at the NASA Lunar Receiving Laboratory back during the Apollo missions, who has kind of, you know, blown the whistle on what he personally saw and observed in Houston and what he was ordered to do vis-a-vis -vis destroying these priceless images and records of artifacts. It, it, it garnered an awful lot of attention from, as you can tell by the little supers, uh, the Russians. And what they did after the press briefing, which lasted about two hours, is that the Russians brought us out into the foyer out front, which is, you know, the kind of press club 13th floor um, main area where people congregate and look for various rooms and the dining rooms and the meeting rooms and all that. And there's this beautiful area which has all kinds of flags. Well, they interviewed Dr. Johnston and myself um, for at least an hour, asking all kinds of interesting questions about particularly the facts that we reveal in Dark Mission relating to President Kennedy and Premier Khrushchev. And their, unbeknownst until real, relatively recently, decision to attempt early on in the Kennedy administration to go to the moon jointly. It, uh, we won't, I, I won't, you know, get into the details of, of what ensues. That, Mike will do part of that and I'll do part of that later in the, in the afternoon. But the fact is that the Russians, for obvious reasons, were apparently intensely interested in that particular aspect of the story. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out why. Because the current government running the former Soviet Union, now Russia, is extremely interested in the moon, extremely interested in sending cosmonauts finally, after 40 years of us having the monopoly, and has announced recently that not only are they going to be sending cosmonauts, but they are going to be establishing a permanent base, a permanent outpost on the lunar surface. Now, this is a few years after our president, George Bush, suddenly announced in 2004 that we were going to do the same thing. So I was very intrigued that the Russians appeared to have an overwhelmingly uh, you know, deep interest in what I'm talking about here, which is comparing uh, the lunar ruins I'm going to talk about extensively later this afternoon with some of Robert McCall's space art, which is kind of like what we can imagine it may have looked like when it was all new, when it wasn't bashed and battered and, and bombarded by meteorites and eons of erosion and meteorite abrasion and, you know, a, a pale echo of what it used to be. Um, we, in fact, got some press interest domestically uh, but it was very curiously timed. It turns out that while Robin and I and Ken Johnston were winging our way on an aircraft like this from Albuquerque to Washington, NBC Nightly News brightly called up uh, Mike, who was our point of contact because he was safely on the ground. Remember, he won't fly. <laughs> he was safely on the ground, somewhere between in a, in a, in a car at Seattle and Los Angeles. Or maybe Seattle and Las Vegas, I don't know. You, you go to the same places by yourself, you know.